Hello everybody, it's Priam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. So we've got some really big news when it comes to mortgage affordability. For all of those people that are looking to get a mortgage or looking to refinance, this is big news because essentially the regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority um, uh, and the Financial Policy Committee within the Financial Conduct Authority has confirmed that they are removing affordability stress, stress testing for mortgages. That will be withdrawn from the 1st of August 2022. So what is an affordability stress test? Now don't get too excited. Let me explain what this is all about. Um, the stress test was introduced in 2014 and requires lenders to assess borrowers' future ability to repay a mortgage. This is calculated by seeing if a borrower would be able to repay a mortgage if the rates were 3% higher than the lender's standard available rate. So that's really important. So what the, the, this rule said to lenders and brokers had to work within that, obviously regulated, we're all regulated. Um, what it essentially said is, look, never mind if the interest rate is 2.5%, okay? Well, never mind they've got affordability now. What if the interest rate is, I don't know, what's your standard variable rate lender? And the standard variable rate for a lender maybe is 5.5% or 5%. What would happen if it was if the rate went 3% higher than your standard available rate? Well, can they still afford it? So this affordability calculation, this rule came in in 2014. Okay, so um, it made quite a big impact for the lenders. Okay, there are other rules that came in at the same time. There was the LTI rule, the loan to income, right? Um, this is where other recommendations which was brought in at the same time will remain. This puts restrictions on how many mortgages a lender can issue at an LTI ratio of four and a half times income or greater. So basically, they put a restriction on what the lenders could lend, how much of it could be at four and a half times or under, and how much of it can be above that. So it put a lot of restrictions on lenders which meant affordability checks had to be done and, and, and stringent. Now, the title of this is LTI caps, but that doesn't mean, you know, self set mortgages, here we come. It just means that lenders now have got a little bit more room to play with, but they still have to run uh, their own affordability stress test models. And to be honest with you, all of these sort of caps, they they're a little bit outdated, and that's why I think the regulators sort of remo removing it because fundamentally everything is done now uh, on income and affordability, income and expenditure. Um, you may be on 150,000 pounds a year, but if you've got a Range Rover paying 700 pounds a month, you've got a big student loan, you're, you've got 40k worth of credit card bills, you're paying for a you know child maintenance, you're paying for school fees all of that, you may not be able to borrow as much as someone who's on £35,000 a year, frankly, okay, because they may not have a big mortgage, they may not have any expenses. So um, a more common sense approach has been taken by lenders over many, many years. Uh, and I think the, the, but this tells us um, what's to come, okay, in my opinion, right? And everything is in my opinion. This is not advice. This is an opinion piece. Um, all of my uh, mortgages really are, uh, all of my mortgage videos are information pieces out there. And you can either take it with, you know, take that information and or, or discard that information. Um, what, I, what I think is this is looking at is the future of our housing market and looking to protect the housing market. We are going through a phase where, um, obviously with the cost of living and with interest rates going up, um, clients are under pressure uh, to be able to still afford that property. Property prices haven't dipped yet, but it could be the regulator or the government or the Bank of England, th they have all got together and said, right, there's gonna be some turmoil ahead, right? How do we protect the housing market. One of the ways we can protect this housing market is by giving people the ability to still be able to borrow and still be able to keep that market buoyant. They don't want the prices to to run away, but they also do not want a crash. The, the worst thing that you want is a property crash. And 
um, especially within the UK because everybody feels that they're wealthy if they've got a property okay and that property is doing well as soon as there's a problem with that it's almost like a stock market you know um, and we've seen we've seen what's happened to the stock market god when I look at my trading 1212 account I know what's happened to the stock market so there are um, there are reasons behind this I believe uh, going forward and I think you will see softening uh, of affordability rules from a lender's perspective we've already seen some lenders come in at five and a half times income six times income income like for like remortgages we had a lender that could potentially have 10 times income so there are there, there are tweaks being made because they think there is something in the horizon that horizon could be you know uh, non-affordable properties but also um, the fact that the interest rates are going to start kicking in and the market is going to slow down a little bit so I think that they're, they're doing that now I don't think it's going to go back to the old wild wild west days of before the 2007 and I don't think that's going to happen um, I think uh, you know the lenders are uh, you know there's a lot more regulatory framework around things now there's certainly a lot more work we have to do as regulated brokers to be able to give the right type of advice but you know there's also there's always a, a danger that some people are going to get themselves into a lot of mess because affordability is going to be pushed further um, and I think you know ultimately um, all of this stuff is nonsense really we're not building enough houses for the people in the right places at the right costs okay it's all great saying we're building lots of houses but most of them are flats and people don't want to live in flats or the people that do want to live in flats those new built flats have been um, overpriced frankly and if, if it wasn't for help to buy saying I know you can't afford it, but here's a load of money you can borrow. Go and buy it. And I think this is where the government's going. I think help to buy um, opened up uh, a, a, a market where I think the government is a little bit more braver to directly get themselves involved in property. I don't think that's a good idea, I, personally. Um, I, you know, I still think we haven't seen the full cycle of help to buy. Um, you know, we've seen the good bits of help to buy, but I don't think we've seen the full cycle of help to buy. It'll be interesting to see how help to buy um, will uh, develop as interest rates going up. Obviously, help to buy is going to be phased out, and I think it'll be interesting, all those people that have purchased the property, uh, what happens to them. Uh, but I still think the government is toying, and we saw Boris Johnson's uh, speech, I think the government is toying with this idea of shared, almost shared ownership with the government. That's what help to buy is fundamentally. Um, and, I, and I think that they're if things start happening where affordability is just not going to be enough there's going to be other incentives of this shared ownership uh, rule there are privately this has been happening obviously with shared ownership and stuff like that but I think the government would want to support it in a much wider range and also not limited to certain types of properties or certain types of people um, let's see there's it's going to be a, a, the, the problem right now still is around affordability and not enough stock. You know, you speak to the estate agent, you speak to my clients, you know, I've got I've got some of my really good friends looking to buy at the moment and they say, look, you know, can you run some figures for me on a property worth X amount? Uh, and then I speak to them and say, how did you get on? They said, yeah, we did well, but, you know, they've got 15 other viewings tomorrow and another 20 the next day and another 10 the next day and the likelihood of an offer going... Uh, you know that property going uh, is, is very very high so this is the market um, I don't shoot the messenger all I, all I can tell you is work with a good broker work with someone who is patient and can work with you long term work with a, uh, a, a reputable firms that can work across the range because fundamentally just because are we offer or recommend a lender today that may not be the lender suitable for you in two weeks time and it could be not suitable for you the next day this is how the market's happening lenders are, are, are coming in going out uh, affordability changes are happening almost on a daily basis work with a broker firm that has got access to the whole of the market and can give you a holistic view of what's happening rather than sticking with one lender because they said they will lend it to you uh, and then you find out three months down the line once you found the property that actually everything's changed um yeah i'll catch you on the next one take care all the best
The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.